Creep Show 2. What can I say? Well, not exactly a classic as far as sequels go. It's a great time. The stories are, well, okay. And the soundtrack is, well, it's okay too. And the acting is, um, well, you get the idea. Guess what I'm saying is, it's not lightning in a bottle, but a nice calm thunderstorm. The kind you like to sleep to on a Sunday afternoon. But don't be mistaken, I still love it unabashedly. But when compared to its predecessor, it's just not the same. It lacks in the atmosphere and soundtrack department, and it's just not a worthy sequel. But it's just fine nonetheless. Directed by Michael Gornick this time, and written by King and Romero, Creepshow 2 is still a great time, no alcohol required. But it helps. With a soundtrack by Les Reed and Rick Wakeman, and a cast that includes Dorothy Lamour, George Kennedy, Holt McClaney, has cameos from both Tom Savini and Stephen King, and Lois Childs, you would think with that caliber of a cast that this would be a fantastic film, but it just doesn't live up to the first one. And that's okay. Not all films are destined to be great classics, like Creepshow, but Creepshow 2 is still one of the best anthology movies, in my opinion, that are out there. And for more behind the scenes information, pick up the Arrow Blu-ray and also the Synapse Films fantastic documentary Just Desserts. This one has only three stories. Old Chief Woodenhead, The Raft, and The Hitchhiker. Now there is still a wraparound, but it's all animated and the animation looks like some kind of 80's cartoon instead of some kind of a creepy out there fantastic heavy metal type animation that was so great in Creepshow 1 and uh, again it's it's fine a few interesting things to note are that Daniel Bear had hypothermia filming the raft Stephen King had a cameo as the truck driver and the hitchhiker George Kennedy also starred with Leslie Nielsen in the Naked Gun series another Creepshow alumni and David Holbrook plays Fatso, which was also the son of Hal Holbrook from Creepshow 1. Les Reed and Rick Wakeman's musical score, like I said, is just, it's just not there. It, it, it doesn't bring up the same emotions, the same creepy feeling of unease that the first Creepshow soundtrack kind of captures and it just hits all the right notes, that first soundtrack. This one's just mediocre at best. It's just kind of meh. I mean, it has its moments, don't get me wrong, but the first soundtrack blows this one just out of the water. If we're comparing, that is. I know a lot of people love The Raft and say it's their favorite segment out of the ones in this film, but for me, it's always going to be The Hitcher. The Hitchhiker in this is just fantastic the the makeup the way that he plays it so comedic the way that her character just kind of goes insane through the whole thing and chief woodenhead i mean that that one is really good too and it's a great little revenge tale but like i said for this review if you want to get more into the backstory of the whole movie and the behind the scenes stuff a lot of the more intimate details, you need to really go pick up those Blu-rays and check out the stories because they are fantastic and it's pretty much the only way to go if you're into behind the scenes stuff. So enough about all of that. Prepare yourselves for the epicness that is Creepshow 2 and or mediocrity, however you see it. And go. Man, I sure do miss seeing this intro. It's magical. And the old wraparound begins. 
And I'm really kind of sad that it's not as well thought out this time, because it just had all kinds of potential. And yet it just kind of misses the mark. Tom Savini's great under the makeup as the creep, though. Transition. <laughs> I will admit, that's pretty great. And title card. We have our recycled Billy character here, reading his Creepshow comic book, and into the first story we go. Tell me that this is not the Crypt Keeper. Here we have Old Chief Woodenhead being cleaned up by Ray, the storekeeper played by George Kennedy, and his wife Martha played by Dorothy Lemoore. I want you to quit, Ray. Business must be horrible. But it's built them a life, and this is really the only thing they have going on, so... They are either going to stay here until they get robbed and killed, or retire and move to Florida. Our American Indian friend owes them a lot of money, but can't really pay, so he leaves them their family treasure as collateral. You can't really take that to the bank, but they go ahead and appease him anyway because they have such a good heart. Akoene, friend. Akoene. Akoene, who know what? A corner, Chief Woodenhead. Well, now he understood. What didn't I get? Now, in this part of the world, it gets dark awfully fast, so they go right inside so they don't get ate up by the old Skeeters. But seriously, how's it nighttime already? This can't be good. This is the Indian Chief's grandson or nephew or whatever, and his posse, and he is hell bent on getting to Hollywood and becoming a movie star. So he's here to rob and kill this old couple. Uh, yep, no Florida vacation for them. But they've got real problems now because they've just pissed off the only possessed wooden Indian in town. <laughs> old Chief Woodenhead. And he gets his own Rambo moment and everything. And if that's not terrifying, I don't know what is. <laughs> So we catch up with Fatso. <laughs> what a name, huh? And I know this is Hal Holbrook's son, but uh, yeah, I guess I can see the resemblance. <laughs> kind of anticlimactic, if you ask me. And here's Curly doing his best Tom Cruise Mission Impossible impression. My heart really does break for him. Hello, sir. How about the haircut? <laughs> Sam White Moon. What a name. Hollywood just beckons to this guy. What do you think? Stunt performer? Action star? How about a final girl? Can't be alive. Hey, that's smart. What's the big idea? You can't go to Hollywood looking like that. How about a haircut? I gave your buddy one. He rather enjoyed it. Now just hold still. Ah, oh, what a nightmare. Wait, what's this? I gotta quit eating jello before bedtime. And our story concludes when we find out Chief Woodenhead has been giving out free haircuts and not charging a fee, leaving the town destitute, and hey look at Harris. One thing that sets apart this one from the original is that the wraparound isn't just at the beginning and end, but it's interspersed between the scenes. Little Billy orders a Venus flytrap, and the plot thickens. It's a plant that eats meat! Oh, hello, kitties! Our next story's called The Raft, and you guessed it, it's about a bunch of college-age high school students who get stuck on a raft. Yay! Now for a lot of people, this is their favorite story in this movie, and I get it. It's claustrophobic, they're stuck out on a raft. Um, yeah. So strike one, they're all high. Strike two, there's a duck being eaten by a gelatinous blob in the middle of this lake. And yet, they go on to the raft. Because there's nothing like being in the middle of nowhere on a raft with toxic sludge all around. Randy 
that hurt. What is it with you? Out of this group of kids, clearly this is the only one with any kind of common sense, making him our second final girl. But in the other's defense, if they had any kind of common sense at all, then we wouldn't have a movie now, would we? Oh, come on, Poncho. You said you sobered up, man. And this is clearly what I'm talking about. This guy knows exactly what's going on, that something's amiss, and the other three just continue to party as if nothing's wrong, giving us our next three victims in quick succession. Ready? I mean, this hits all the notes. It, uh, well, that was disgusting. But it hits all the notes. This is like 80s horror film plot 101 to the T. And now all our kids know and agree that something's clearly not right with this water. And maybe we should try to get back to the car and get the hell out of here. The only problem is that there's this gelatinous sludge that wants to eat us all. And that could pose as a problem. Strike two, you're out. So now you're probably asking yourself, how will all this end? Will our hero make it out alive? Well, let's just say things get a little rapey, which puts his fate into question for sure. Oh, Randy! Three, you're out. Randy realizes this is his last chance for escape and wastes no time by jumping in the water and swimming just as fast as he can to the shore while his uh, victim perishes. I beat you! And while confessing his masturbatory habits, he's quickly eaten up by the blob, and in fantastic creep show fashion, we have no survivors. And it's a fitting end to the rapist, which was Randy. And if they had only paid attention to the no swimming sign hidden behind all of this brush. And now for some interspersed animation that introduces us to Billy's bullies. Now for all the negative things that I've said about this animation, I do still enjoy it. It's a fun, mean-spirited little tale interspersed with our other stories that's quite enjoyable overall. Talk about hackzillerating! And our last story is The Hitchhiker. And this one is my all-time favorite. It's comedic and stylishly horrible. It has societal and racial undertones that hit all the right notes with a cameo from Stephen King as a truck driver and it has the best acting in the entire film, period. And upon multiple viewings you can see that this has to be, or at least it seems like, where most of the budget of this film was spent. It's basically a one-man show, just like in Creepshow 1. Here we have Annie Lansing, played by Lois Childs, who's an adulterous two-timer cheating on her husband with some gigolo. And after their little encounter, makes her way back home, but gets caught up in a hit and run incident, killing an innocent man on his way home to Dover. Now it's up in the air and open to interpretation that this is all in her head or if she's actually being haunted. But in my opinion, I think that it's just all in her head and she's slowly going insane as she's being haunted by the thought of having killed this person, the guilt of her having an affair, and uh, it ultimately ends in her demise. What the fuck happened? What do you think's happened? The guy got creamed, that's what happened. Stephen King, everybody. <laughs> Mrs. Lansing, paranoid as ever and starting to hallucinate, makes it to her exit only to find a familiar face by the roadside. How you doing, lady? Thanks. Thanks for the ride. She speeds off, shocked and afraid, and then quickly realizes, hey, maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe this is just all in my head. Wrong. Thanks for the ride. I will never get tired of hearing that. While trying to give him the shake, she veers off into the woods, which is clearly a great idea. 
we get some well-placed 80s gun violence. And having completely lost her marbles, she runs over the man again and again, which I cannot show you here on YouTube. It's pretty graphic, but even that won't keep this guy down. I love just how over the top everything in this segment is. The acting, the violence, it's fantastic. Now she really puts it to this guy, gets him up against a tree and just literally keeps smashing into him over and over again, just making complete pulp out of him. And she's clearly unconscious long enough for it to snow. Okay, well, maybe she just got tired, ran off the road, had an accident, and this was all just part of her imagination. Where the hell am I? She makes her way out of the woods and back to her home finally, pulling in her nice warm garage, just beating her husband home so that her infidelity will never be discovered. There's just one thing though. Her husband finally returns home, and guess who it is? Hey, it's the guy that was at the crash site, which is the reason why he's home so late. And as you can see, the car is perfectly intact, and she went home, and under the weight of the guilt running this guy over, asphyxiated herself and died. How fitting. Now we catch up with Billy in the wraparound. He's still being pursued by his bullies. But fear not, Audrey 2 is here to save the day. <laughs> Venus flytraps. Giant Venus flytraps. They eat meat! And that payoff was pretty amazing, if I do say so myself. And we get Tom Savini again, as the creep. From the crypt. <laughs> and that's Creep Show 2. And Tom Savini just keeps littering down the road all the way out of frame. Yep. Just riding down a Pennsylvania highway and throwing paper and garbage all over the place. A real role model for today's youth. But in all seriousness, he's fantastic as the creep. The makeup effects are great in this film. And, uh, you know, I just, it's not that I hate this film. I really do enjoy this film a lot, and a lot of people do. It's an underrated sequel, but at the same time, it could have been so much more. Mind-boggling decisions like the animation style was probably just budgetary, and it's still a fine little flick. I'll take this over Creepshow 3 any day of the week. Go and check out the Shutter series instead, you will not be disappointed. That wraps up the review of Creepshow 2. Like and subscribe. My shameless plug, by the way. I'll see you next time. Still littering. <laughs>